Hello, in this video, I am going to talk about everything related to AS Physics Practical, paper three, question number one. I'm going to talk about the things that you are just tiny, weeny things that you are supposed to bear in mind and what are the cause of the inaccuracy of your result and how to make sure you score full marks for your AS Physics Practical Paper 3, question number one. Let us get started. So the four popular questions that always pop up in your Physics Practical Paper 3, question number ones are oscillations. You kind of get rid of oscillation. It's either the oscillation of simple pendulum bob, oscillation of the modeling clay, oscillation of ruler, etc or angle measurement. You just need to measure angle. And length, distance, height, or extension measurement. And the last one is the most headache one, which is electricity. Let us look at these four questions. Let us analyze these four questions one by one, and the things that you should be avoided in making callous mistake in answering these four types of questions. First one, it is about oscillation. So these are the questions related to oscillations that I copied from the past years. You can see that oscillations are quite popular. So the things that to bear in your mind is that always make sure is this is about oscillation. Doesn't matter whether this is oscillation related to oscillation of the ruler, oscillation of the rod, oscillation of the pendulum bob, etc. Always take more than five oscillations. You might want to ask why I need to take five oscillations. That is super duper extra, right? I just take one oscillation and that's it because oscillation question is normally related to period. You have to find period or you have to calculate or measure period. So why we need to take more than five oscillations is because we want to reduce the percentage error that could be caused by air resistance. You definitely know that moving object experiences air resistance. That is why if you want to reduce the air resistance, you make sure that the angle of oscillation, the speed of the oscillation of the pendulum bob or your ruler must be as low as possible, but still could be measured and still could be seen by you that the object has already made some oscillations there, over there. Ah, that and because the speed, when the speed of the object is lesser, you could actually reduce the air resistance just a little bit. But if you take more oscillation, you could reduce the random error that could have occurred as well. I hope this is your expression. And the next thing that you should bear in mind is that you have to make sure that the object has already made two or three complete oscillations before you even start your stop. I noticed that most of the students, they, they are like, when they conduct the experiment, they're too rushed in starting the stopwatch. Um, do you know why? First, it's because we want to reduce the human's reaction time. So when you release the, let's say the pendulum bob, for it to swing and then you press the stopwatch at the same time and due to your human's reaction time you could press the stopwatch a little bit faster before you release the pendulum bob or you could press it even slower after you have already released the pendulum bob so that will give that that will actually give rise to error uh, that could cause your experiment to be less accurate as compared to other candidates so why not just relax, let the pendulum bob or let the ruler or let the rod swing for two to three complete oscillation first. One, two, three, then only you start your stopwatch. That will be even better. Oh, I see. Now, the last important thing is that please listen carefully do not ever get hypnotized because things related to oscillation, whenever you see it, one, two, three, you could get hypnotized. That is just a joke. Okay, do not get hypnotized. Okay, whenever you take oscillation, make sure that you do it seriously. That's all.
And for oscillation question, normally the table tabulation will be something like this. I give you just one example. Let's say you are supposed to change the length of uh, the string that is being attached to the pendulum bob. And then which related to the period of the pendulum bob. Length. First, let us look at the symbol. When you tabulate the table, this is what we call heading of the table. Heading of the table means the, the title of the table. So this is the symbol of the length, L, and then you slash the unit of the length. And this is time taken for N oscillation. It could be five oscillation, could be six oscillation, could be more than that. And T, this is the symbol of the time, slash the unit of time. T1, that means T1, T2, are the results of the time taken. And T2 is the, just a repetition. And T average, uh, to make sure that my experiment is more accurate, you need to repeat your measurement. And that's the period, T slash the unit. Look at length first. Let's say if you are using a meter rule to measure the length of the string, Right, you need to follow the sensitivity. All the length measurements must follow the decimal point of the sensitivity of the apparatus. For example, you use meter rule to measure the length of the string. What is the sensitivity of the meter rule? Sensitivity means the smallest division of the meter rule. The smallest division of the meter rule is just like the smallest division of my CM rule which is 0 0.1 cm. So if you want to put plus minus here to represent the sensitivity of the meter rule, yes, you may put it there to avoid careless mistake. Each and every time when I tabulate the table, I will put in that sensitivity of my apparatus to avoid making careless mistake. So all the length measurement must be recorded in one decimal point. That is what we call consistency of the data tabulation. And time taken for N oscillation, we use stopwatch. The sensitivity of the digital stopwatch that we use is actually 0 0.01 second. The problem is not the stopwatch. The problem is with us human. Our human reaction time is not as fast as 0 0.01 second. And it varies from 0 0.3 second to 0 0.7 second. So we are not so sensitive as compared to the sensitivity of the stopwatch. Therefore, I know myself, I have human reaction time, right? And due to my human reaction time, I would increase the sensitivity, uh, I would decrease the sensitivity of the stopwatch to be 0 0.1 second. So all my T1 and T2 readings, I just put them in terms of one decimal point. T average is not a measured data. T average is called calculated data. So for the calculated data, you just look at the significant figures of your raw data. So for T average, it is being calculated from T1 plus T2 divided by 2. That is how you calculate the average value of T. So you have to look at the significant figures of T1 and significant figures of T2. So let's say T1 value is 22.1 and T2 value is 22.4, for example, for example. So when you record the T average, I know that my T1 has three significant figures and I know that my T2 has three significant figures as well. Therefore, T average will take three significant figures. What about period? Period is calculated from T average divided by N, number of oscillations. Since the T average is three significant figures, therefore my period will be three significant figures as well. That is how you tabulate your table. If you have any problem with your table tabulation, please feel free to comment below. Thank you. And the next one is about angle measurement. That is a protractor. We are using this protractor to measure angle. Now, things for you to bear in mind for angle measurement is that the readings must be recorded without decimal point. Why? First, look at the sensitivity of the protractor. Smallest division of the protractor is one degree. So the sensitivity is actually one degree. There's no decimal point. Therefore, all your readings must be recorded without decimal point in degrees. Well, you also have to make sure that your eye level is perpendicular to the scale on the protractor. Why again? To avoid parallax error. 
And of course, it is not just one-time measurement and that's your answer right away. Due to some random errors, we could actually make some callous mistake during our measurement. That is why repetition is the must. And also finding the average after that to reduce the random error that could have occurred during your experiment. The next one is about length, distance, height, and extension measurement. So these are the questions that came up in the past years. And things to bear in mind is that, first of all, make sure the readings are recorded accordance to the decimal point or decimal places of the sensitivity of your apparatus. This again, what is the sensitivity again? There are a few apparatus that we could use to measure the length or the distance or the extension. Let me explain the apparatus one by one. First one is your meter rule. So meter rule, the sensitivity or the smallest division of the meter rule is 0 0.1 cm. So all the readings recorded by the meter rule must be recorded in terms of one decimal point. If you measure the length using the meter rule, just record it in terms of one decimal point. That's it. Oh, have you ever seen this before? This is called vernier caliper. Vernier caliper is more sensitive as compared to the meter rule, but it can only measure smaller length. So the sensitivity of the, or the smallest division of the vernier caliper is 0 0.01 cm. If you ever use the vernier caliper to do your measurement, make sure that your readings must be recorded in two decimal points. And the third one, this is the most sensitive apparatus that we have in the lab that can be used to measure the length or the very, very small length or very, very small diameter. It is called micrometer screw gauge. And the sensitivity of the micrometer screw gauge is 0 0.001 cm. It could be used to measure the thickness of the my hair, the strain of my hair, and thickness of a piece of paper. Normally, it is used to measure the thickness of a wire. Right. Uh, so if you ever use this uh, micrometer, make sure to put your readings in terms of three decimal points or decimal places in CM. And also make sure that your eye is always perpendicular to the scale of the apparatus. Don't tilt your head left. Don't tilt your head right. Make sure that your eye level is always at the scale. And repeat the measurements is a must and find the average to reduce the random error that could have occurred during experiment. And the last one, which is the most headache one, is related to electricity. Normally for electricity, students find it very hard to get to plot a straight line graph. If the question ever asks them to plot a straight line graph, there are reasons why you cannot find, you, you, it's very hard to plot a straight line graph. I will explain this later. So these are all the positive questions that came up. Things for you to bear in mind is that, first of all, make sure that you test all the instruments provided, all the apparatus provided on your bench before you even start with the experiment. Because some of the apparatus come with faulty. So make sure that you test first before you connect to your circuit. And make sure that your connections follow exactly the circuit diagram provided on your question paper. Emitter, things that you should bear in mind is that emitter must be connected in series with the main circuit. How do you see? How do you connect it? Some students, they understand that emitter needs to be connected in series, but they do not know what series mean when it comes to connection. Okay, try to... Uh, I try to make your life easier. All you need to do, okay, whenever you connect, okay, power supply is being given or a battery is being given, make sure that you just connect your emitter. Uh, in, like this case, you just connect your emitter to the negative terminal of your power supply. Or you could connect your emitter to the positive terminal of the power supply. Exactly. Depends on the circuit diagram provided. Whereas voltmeter must be connected in parallel to the main circuit. Parallel means you add another connection to the circuit. For example, uh, once you have connected everything here, all you need to do is just to connect your voltmeter. Voltmeter will be the last one you connect. 
And also make sure each and every time after each measurement has been made, please disconnect the circuit. Do you know why? Whenever we are dealing with this circuit diagram, right? Whenever there's a current passing through the whole circuit, especially the connecting wires, the connecting wires that you are using is quite thin. They are quite thin. So it, they could be easily heated up whenever current keeps on flowing into them. That is why to avoid, when, when these connecting wires heated up, it will add up to the overall resistance, which will increase the overall resistance and making your result to be even less accurate. So each and every time, take one measurement, disconnect the circuit for a few seconds, let the circuit cool down first and reconnect it back to take your measurement. And have you ever experienced this? When we talk about electricity, when we are using digital emitter and digital voltmeter, have you ever experienced your emitter reading and your voltmeter readings both fluctuate? Or emitter reading fluctuates or voltmeter reading fluctuation? Have you ever experienced this? And do you know how to solve it when you experience fluctuation in the reading? Sometimes it shows this reading. Sometimes it shows another reading. Do you know how to solve it? Well, I'm going to review the answer in my next video. Meanwhile, you could also watch my other videos, which I have already uploaded in the YouTube channel, in my YouTube channel. So these are the videos related to your AS physics. And if you have the answer in mind, please do comment below. And if you have any questions that you face in your paper three, please do comment below as well. So these are my other channels which you can join. And I strongly suggest you to join my Facebook group for the PDF answer, for the PDF notes from time to time. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.